Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our AVAB today and we're going to look at conventional takeoff and landing. So let's get straight into it and let's get prepped. So flaps we want to have in auto which are going to be about 25% on the ground, 25 degrees sorry. Uh, we want to turn our water injection on for cooling so this switch here, three way switch to take off so that is right mouse button to take off. We want to be in our v still mode for the HUD. Now we've got nose wheel steering on a minute, so the first thing is, well I should say first thing, ensure that your power parking brake is off, uh, which I'm sure it would be anyway at this point. Next thing I'm going to have nose wheel steering on and I just like to roll forward a little bit to make sure that my front nose wheel is lined up straight. There's nothing worse than trying to take off, finding that your nose wheel is cocked to the side or something um, and, and you run off the edge of the runway or something like that. So it's just something I always like to do with all of my planes. Next we're going to turn nose wheel steering off. There's one right click there and we're back to caster steering now. Next we're going to change our nozzle position so with our nozzle axis we are going to roll a nozzle here to 10% and we can confirm there with the analog gauge. As for the procedure I'm going to hold wheel brake on, I'm going to roll to spool to 60% here. Then I'm going to release once we're spooled to 60%. I'm then going to ramp all the way up to 100%. And it's just going to move pretty fast. We are relatively light. We're full fuel at the moment. Well, medium weight at the moment. Full fuel, but no stores. Uh, regardless of what weight we are, we are going to rotate with aft stick at 130 knots. Now, if she's relatively light, she'll take off straight away. If she's quite heavy, it will take a while before she lifts off the ground. Now, the key thing is at this point to be patient and just wait until she takes off. Don't rotate any further because we could risk striking the back of the plane on the ground. Wait and she'll take off when she's ready to take off. Once we've got some decent vertical velocity, hit the G key. It's going to take our gear up and we can quickly just look down and check. It's going to be this knob here and indicators here. We can leave flaps in auto. They will change themselves depending on the speed or if once we're above about 200 knots then you can change them to cruise in the up position there. It's up to you. What we're going to do once we're up we're going to get in a left hand air filled circuit that will be at 300 knots IAS and 1000 feet AGL. So let's get on with it. Now while I've been nattering you'll notice that my plane has slid to the right slightly. It does that it's a bit annoying. Um, so we're going to go nose wheel steering back on. Just going to line her back up again and get straight. Off. Brake on. 60%. Brake off. 100%. Wait for 130. 130 rotate and a little bit wobbly, but okay. Gear up straight away. Flaps can stay. Because we're relatively light without stores there, she's accelerated extremely quickly. So you have to be quite quick there. I wasn't quite ready for that. So accelerate up now to 300 knots and um, we're going to turn our water off back to standard to off and I'll report back to you on the downwind. Right, welcome back. We're on the downwind leg of our circuit now. Now the one thing I uh, forgot to mention was that once we were airborne and above about 200 knots uh, we just knocked the uh, nozzles back to zero degrees, so fully back position. Right, we are on our circuit so when wherever we're landing in visual good visual conditions like this, we are going to land from a circuit. We're never going to come straight in. That's reserved for uh, low visibility landings. Uh, the circuit can be left hand or right hand. We're in a left hand circuit now. And what this means is that we're always going to be turning on a base leg turn before we come in for our final approach and the touchdown. Um, now this base leg turn is where we're going to be doing most of the work in preparation for the final approach. Now I should say at this point if you want to know more about uh, airfield landing circuits then please look in our educational general section and we've got tutorials in it there. Before I go any further I should say that this aircraft does have an ILS system for low visibility landing. It's called AWLS. It's that button there basically but and I've got a video on that but that is just for low visibility visibility landings. We'll 
always use visual, our eyes, if it's going to be a good visibility landing. So when we're doing our base leg turn, that's where we're going to do our preparation for landing. That's where we're going to start going from circuit speed, which is currently 300 knots, circuit altitude, which is about 1000 for AGL, to the beginning of the approach. Now the approach is going to be uh, essentially as close as we can get in the Harrier to a normal airfield uh, aircraft type of landing. Even though we're doing a conventional landing, we're still going to use some nozzle because at the end of the day, we can't really land this like we can a normal airfield aircraft. So at the end of our base leg turn, we want to going to be about 150 knots and roughly still at our 1000 foot circuit height. And we're going to want to make our approach at a minus three degree descent or thereabouts as per a conventional aircraft landing. Now our speed is going to be 130 knots. That's what I prefer to land on a conventional landing. Now take note that we are a medium weight at the moment. We're high fuel, no stores. If we were heavy stores, which is unlikely but possible, then we're going to want to ramp that speed up to near 150 knots just for an extra bit of lift. For this conventional landing, we're going to use just auto flaps. So it's going to be about uh, 25 degrees of flaps on the approach. Now, when we approach the threshold of the runway, we are going to want a feather our altitude a little bit just to soften the actual landing and meeting the concrete. And that's going to be a little bit of a mixture of a tiny bit of aft stick and a little tiny small increase in throttle as well. So this is kind of somewhere between a um, stall landing and a conventional airfield landing. Right, so let's get on with it. So from our nav cruise, we're going to V-stall. Our flaps want to be in auto. Whoops, uh, where am I? Yep, our flaps want to be in auto. We want to turn our landing water on. Now, technically, we probably don't need landing water for a conventional takeoff, but just as good practice, I'm going to do it anyway. Just to, an extra bit of power, just in case. And just a quick look at the HUD symbology. We've got our witch's hat there. there. That is where the aircraft is facing. That is our path uh, vector there. That is where the aircraft is actually moving towards. And we've got our usual stuff, our speed there, and we've got our vertical velocity there. Now, I'm not going to pay too much attention to the vertical velocity because we're, in, we're looking for a more of a conventional landing. Right, I've just realised that I've messed my altitude up while doing that, so let me just get back down to circuit altitude for good practice. Keep on speed. Right, uh, so we're going to be looking over our left shoulder to keep an eye on where that runway is. And we're also going to be looking over our left shoulder while doing our base leg turn um, to make sure that we end the turn in line with the runway. So it's going to be a fairly tight turn by the looks of it. So I'm just going to turn right a little bit. Doing a final check around the cockpit, make sure everything's okay. Uh, we're going to go out another half mile or so just so we get plenty of talking time and it's not too rushed. Okay, we're going to start our turn now. We're going to throttle down. We're going to keep our path vector roughly on the horizon. We don't want to really lose or gain altitude. We want to come out with the, uh, uh, the turn roughly about circuit altitude. It's going to have to be a fairly quick turn. So let's keep our uh, throttle low. Now we shouldn't need to use any air brake. We can burn all the speed we need to off on this turn. Speed's coming down nicely. Angle of attack is rising. Now we're going to start. Uh, one thing I haven't talked about is the nozzle position. And this can vary a little bit. But I would say between 30 and 40% for a conventional landing. So we'll start knocking the nozzles down just in a second as we come out on our final approach. Right, whoopsie. We're starting to lose lift now as we get slow. Starting to knock the nozzles down. Down to 30% now. Now we're going to keep off the throttle and our altitude, I'm just because we've come out a little further than I usually would on a final, I'm just going to ride the horizon for a little bit, otherwise we'll be well below our 3 degree descent. So I'm just going to keep our vector on the horizon, now I'm just going to start to add a little bit of throttle as we neutralise at about 150 knots and work our way down to 130. Okay, just going to let the, um, the, the vector, the path Landing vector, gear. Landing gear. gear down with the G key. Landing I'll, gear. Yes, I know. The path vector now, I'm right. We're down to our 130 knots now, so we're going to add a little bit of power now. We want to keep our, um, our path vector on the threshold of the runway, our nose slightly above horizon, up to 5%. Slightly below 130 knots, but that's okay. So, balancing a tiny bit of um, aft stick, which I'm going to now. 
trim out. So I'm now neutral stick. I've now got my uh, path vector on the threshold. Slightly below speed, but it's only a few knots, so it's okay. So I've got neutral stick now, and I'm just using the trim to roll up and down. So with a normal plane, a normal airfield approach, I would cut the throttle as I went over the threshold. In this, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep throttle on all the time. Speeding up now, didn't mean to do that, so let's just uh, neutralise that, lose a little bit of throttle. Now I'm going to start to feather now with a little bit of aft stick. Now watch our vertical velocity now, and we want to neutralise that, add a tiny bit of power. Okay, vertical velocity is now neutralised down to about 100 feet per minute, and just let us settle. And we're down. A little bit of a rough landing, but uh, not too bad. I'm going to pump the brakes now. That wasn't too bad. I haven't flown the Harrier uh, for a while, so I'm a bit rusty. But uh, that was roughly what I was trying to show. So the main things to remember was the speed, adjusting on the weight of the aircraft. If you're heavy, we're going to have to go a little bit faster. Uh, 30 to 40 degree nozzles seems to work best for conventional landing. We can do it with just normal flaps. We don't have to go down to full flaps, at which point it's going to turn into more of a stall landing. Use the base leg turn to take the energy and the speed out of the plane and just glide down on our normal three degree descent. Uh, that's all I can think of. I hope that helps. See you later.